Hey guys, it's Cooper Gretsch here from Kick It to Scoops. I am the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumors, and results. You want to be part of the show, Kick It to Scoops? Send through your questions through the Facebook link, which I'll attach every show on the post. And if you want to email me at aflinfolive at gmail.com, send through your questions and you may feature on the show and be answered your question from yours truly, Cooper Gretsch, for free. Yes, for free. If you want to be on the show, as I said, send it through and I'll get back to you. Go Saints. Two easy this is. Yes, Scoops! Come on, mate! Let's keep going! I had a dream, a dream of having a successful podcast. You now may say, Cooper, why is the light so dark? But at the moment, I'm in the darkness of not knowing when I will succeed to the big times. Hopefully it's down the corner, around the corner, very, very soon. Craig McRae, Chris Green, Jaden Stevenson, Jack Perez, Sarah Riley, Tom Morris, and the list goes on and on and on. Hopefully that is and many more things where the future will be brighter. As you can see now, the light is starting to become brighter. Hopefully that dream will be realised. And not only will I be acknowledged, but the dream comes true. It is time to welcome back for the second season of Kick It to Scoops. I had a dream, a dream having a successful podcast you now may say Cooper why is your light so dark but at the moment I'm in the darkness of not knowing when I will succeed to the big times hopefully it's down the corner around the corner very very soon Craig McRae Chris Green Jaden Stevenson Jack Perris Sarah Riley Tom Morris the list goes on and on and on hopefully that is and many more things where the future will be brighter. As you can see now, the light is starting to become brighter. Hopefully that dream will be realised. And not only will I be acknowledged, but the dream comes true. It is time to welcome back for the second season of Kick It to Scoops. On the way to the arena, it is none other than Scoops. It's, it's Scoops. It is Scoops. We're going out here. We're going. We're going. We're going. We're charging in. See? Leaving the crew. We're going down the race. It's time. You can see down there. It's time to go out to the middle. Huh? How many runs today? She was 12, nothing. Oh, no, you're going to hit it through. That's exactly what you're going to do. And you are all going to acknowledge me. The one. You're going to acknowledge me. The one. I am the slide I am the head of the table. I am the king of proof. I am the And you are going to enjoy it. Yeah. I'm to screw. 
Hello everyone and welcome to Kick It to Scoops. I'm your host Cooper Gretsch, the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumors and results, and then also your number one super coach king for round five 2022. We'll get to that very shortly. Yes, bit up and about after this previous round's super coach victory, two thousand dollars worth mod I had. Uh, yes, so we'll get to that very soon. We've got the world famous segment. Scoops goes bang is always going to review and preview the rounds that's gone and upcoming. Some super coach talk, and one particular fan, Lockie, has sent me in some questions, so I'll go through them later on. As they will preview and review the rounds that's gone and upcoming. Super coach talk we'll get to soon. Scoops goes bang. My scoops medal and my team of the week, and an announcement of who the next guest on Kick It to Scoops it is, who it is. You'll find it very soon. So a very very loaded show for you guys today. And while I'm at it, first. You want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. If you want me to roast any of your mates, shout outs, happy birthdays for weddings, engagements, a child being born or whatever, um, anything at all. Want me just to roast your mate, talk about the saints, whatever at all. You know what to do, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. And merch, there is plenty of merch on the shop. There's the Scoops Life, Life, L-I-F-E top, symbolizing my three Favorite sports, cricket, AFL, and wrestling, uh, all on one top. There's the only deal in boundaries cricket t-shirt. There's Scoops Goes Bang You Are Block shirt. There is so, so many tops on there. So And hats and stickers and stubby holders as well and hoodies. So just go on the shop. The link is in the description of this video. You can go and check that out. Now, I might mix up the order here today. Uh, will I? Or should I start with the segment? Guys, you know what? I'm going to start with it. Please welcome the world famous segment, Scoops Goes Bang! Boom. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, umpire, respect, whatever the wording is they want to use. Seriously, this has gotten ridiculous. There's a point where you wave your arms out, you're not necessarily abusing someone by using swear, swear words or anything like that, just throwing your arms up in frustration and that. 50 metres, show some respect. Andrew Stevens was the first umpire. Mm, funny, that umpire's in a lot of controversial um, matters. That absolute spud of an umpire. But anyway, how he gets a gig still, I don't know. Uh, they must be desperate and have no backups. Uh, because how's he gets the game regularly? He's pathetic. And the bigger games too. Uh, the game he did on Thursday night was umpire pathetic. In all the way through, the umpiring was so inconsistent with these waving the arms. They say, you're going to show respect and they're going to pay him. Uh, which is ridiculous in itself, but um, then just sh- to pay some and not the others, it's just, it's ruined the game this round, for sure. So many blowouts, but that's not necessarily why, but the umpire, and, and I'm sure you all can agree on this, that the umpire in this round was a joke. It's a joke every single week, but this particular, where they're paying 50 for not showing respect, if you put your hands out, no swearing or anything like that, you just throw your arms out, or showing frustration, Boom, 50 metres, and they say show respect. How about you umpire the game properly, and you may get the respect. Umpire crap and cost teams games, you ain't going to get it back. Now, I put a hashtag here last night. Hashtag soccer, softer than soccer. That's true. We're getting to a point where the umpiring in AFL is just as terrible as soccer. Soccer is bad and soft. That's what this game is now becoming in AFL. It is like soccer, if not worse at the moment than soccer. And he's getting absolutely soft to do. Nick Gill's also leaving the AFL, so whoever replaced him. And the match review. Get Michael Christian off, for God's sake. We talked about Paddy Ryder in my bonus clip last week. And previous and many, many examples over the years. So we're getting let off and everything like that. How the hell can this keep happening? Get rid of Christian, Michael Christian. Get rid of the whole lot of them. And restart. And fix the rules. That is an embarrassing rule. And it's making the game look like a joke. Because it is a joke at the moment with the umpiring. It lifts your game. And while we're talking about the match of your officer, Michael Christian. Now, I'm going to show you these two clips below. Or on your screen right now. If you listen on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, you won't see the clip. But you should know the clip that I'm talking about. And that is plain and simple. Tex Walker getting tripped by Trent Cotchin. And Stephen May tripping Bobby Hill. And see the, these two clips right now. And then I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts on it. And leave your thoughts down below. Over 50, out of bounds on the ball. 
Oh, well, not happy, Tex. He reckons you might have been a straight boot in there. He is not happy at all. Yeah. 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 Replay is just what Walker was, was so angry about. about. A, a kick, kick to the leg from, from Cochin. Cochin. You reckon he switched the foot up at all? This is falling over, wasn't it? Oh, there it is. Is it a little bit there? Yeah. 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 No, just enough. Wow, you've seen them two clips of Stephen May tripping Bobby Hill and Tex getting tripped by Trent Cotchin. Both got let off. No suspension. You have got to be kidding me. Now people go, oh, come on. That was intentional. You cannot tell me that was careless. That was intentional by Cotchin, for sure. And to a lesser extent to Stephen May, but definitely Trent Cotchin. And Tex has just come out today on radio in, on Triple M in Adelaide saying if that was him, he would have copped a month. Absolutely. And then he said, had that been Toby Green, he would have copped the entire season. Absolutely. Maybe not the season, but, you know, a big lengthy suspension. And it, Tex is right. He and Toby Green would have both copped a lengthy suspension for that. Our Trent Cotchin, one of the players, most protected players in the competition, along with Selwood and Dangerfield and Bonham Pally and people like that. How can you get let off of that? What example is that setting? That, that anyone else can do that? I guarantee you the next player that's not named Trent Cotchin that does that will get in trouble. And when we'll backtrack and go, well, that's not fair because Trent Cotchin didn't get it. Same with Selwood. Now, Paddy Ryder, when he copped two weeks for a bump, that was not intentional, copped two weeks. The next player that does the same incident as Paddy Ryder, they should be getting two weeks. And that will just show that the inconsistencies they have show. Tim English, two weeks prior to Ryder, did the same act, should not wait for the, the uh, whether they can cuss or not, should be the way they, you know, go about it. If they go about it the same way, it should not matter whether you're can cuss or not. If you did miss my clip on the bonus club, go check that out. But the umpiring is a joke. Tex was right in what he said. He would have got a month for that. Toby Green would have got more. It's a joke because it's Trent Cotchin. It's the AFL's love child. One of their many few love childs. Had that not been Trent Cotchin and that been a, a fringe player or a club that, that doesn't get looked after, they would have copped something. They would have probably copped a week. So you stamp it out. But because it's Cochin, they don't care. The AFL, Michael Christian, let your game pathetic. It's a joke. The tribunal's a joke, by the way. And if you didn't hear my thoughts, as I said on the bonus clip on Paddy Ryder, go check it out. It's on the channel. And while I'm at it, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll get to that in a sec. Hope you guys enjoyed that edition of Scoops Goes Bang. Leave your thoughts down below. And happy 100th video for yours truly, Cooper Gretchen, the sole admin of AFL information, trade rumors, and results. I forgot to mention, this video you're watching and listening to right now on the YouTube channel is video number 100. We raise the center, raise the center, raise the bat, raise the bat, raise the bat. Um, yeah, we can raise the bat in cricket. As you've seen in the intro, I am the one. Now, people were asking me too, before I go into the next topic, Coops, are you going to have a super coach commemorative top for Coming number one for round five, 2022. My score was 2,557. Could have been more, but it was that. Uh, is there going to be a commemorative top for it? Well, let's, let's just say it's in the works. It is in the works. I've had a few people ask me that. So, uh, yes, it is in the works. Now, let's move on um, to what I'm going to go through next. And that is, so we're going to go through the Super Coach because I know you're eagerly waiting to hear my thoughts on my super coach. Now, as you'll see in the screen above, you would have seen my score, 2,557. It was a very, very great score for me. I was very pleased with how I went. Um, I'm just getting my team up in front of me, which you can see on your screen now also. In my back line, I had... I'll go through the my score. Round 5 score was 2,557. My total score over the five rounds is 11,687. Round one, a uh, round five ranking was number one. My overall ranking now, I was shot from the top 3% to the top 1%. And now, to be exact, I'm 106 in the world. 
out of 161 plus thousand people on Supercoach. Now, my back line was Jack Sinclair, Jack Crisp, James Sicily, Paddy McCartan, George Stewart, and Nathan O'Driscoll. Captain was Jackson McRae, Jack Steele, Lockie Neal, Clayton Oliver, Andy Brayshaw, Tom Green, Pat Lipinski, Nick Dacos, Ruckman English, and Rowan Marshall. Four line Isaac Keeney, Stevie Cornelio, Jade Gresham, Will Brody, Joshua Shelley, and Jack Hayes. Now, some people want some advice on Supercoach. It's the loophole. Now, the loophole is a key. Now, what you need to do is you need to have the loophole option. So, for example, I put Jack Hayes as the emergency. He was the player with the first game. Him and Nick Mart from Essendon and Hawthorne's Ned Long. Ned Long was never playing, so that was fine. He was the loophole option had I wanted to do it, and I did. So my way I went about it is Jack Hayes, St Kilda was playing before Essendon. St Kilda played Saturday, Essendon played Sunday. I thought, okay, let's give Jack Hayes the emergency and see how he goes. And if he goes well, I'll put Ned Long on, who's not playing, then I'll get Hayes' points. Jack Hayes scored 105. I thought, yep, well, that's a guarantee. Nick Martin, even if he gets near that, I'm taking the guaranteed points of 105 from Jack Hayes. So I subbed Nick Martin off. Completely, put Ned Long on, had the emergency on Jack Hayes, knowing Ned Long wasn't playing. Boom, Scoops gets 105 for Jack Hayes. So had I not done that, second best for the round was about 32 points behind. Jack Hayes got 34 points more than Nick Martin. So had I not fielded Jack Hayes over Nick Martin, I would not have won. I would have been second by a few points. So I want to give a big thank you to Jack Hayes. (laughs) From the Saints, uh, for scoring 105, had he not scored over 60, I would have taken Nick Martin, and um, yeah, thank God for Jack Hayes scoring 105, thank you Jack Hayes, hashtag thank you Jack Hayes. Uh, look, we'll see, now, in, in the other way, if it was the other way around, Nick Martin had played first, he scored 71, I would have taken that, I would have been the safe guard and taken that, so, St Kilda played first, has won me the game. So Jack Hayes, thank you. And uh, Nick Martin, thank God you didn't play first because I would have taken the 71 and I would have lost by two points for the round. So I would have been second and lost by two points. So Jack Hayes, thank you, Jack Hayes. Now, that's my team. You want any advice and any questions you want answered, like Lockie has now sent me through, I will now get through to them right now from superfan Lockie. Now, I want to go through Lockie's questions. He's given me three questions. Any questions at all, guys, you want to send in the future, please send them through. Now that you know I'm ranked number one for the round and 106th overall, I think I'm legit enough to answer your questions for Supercoach. Funny how the trolls said I can't do Supercoach. I'm biased. I pick all the St. Gilda plays. Well, I'll just shut them back in their box and uh, they've gone very quiet over the last few days. And even when St. Gilda win, they've been very, very quiet. Funny that. We'll go three questions from Lockie. First one is, what do I do with Brody Grundy? He says, is he worth holding on to or is it time to move on? And his other ruckman are Jared Witts and Sam Hayes is his bench ruck. Good question, Lockie. We'll start off with that one first, mate. Um, I This is the first year, mate, I never started with Brody Grundy. I'm one of the Brody Granny hype train is, and my love child apparently people would say, well, that's not true. But anyway, I always start with Grundy and Gorn. This year, I thought, no, I, I don't want to do that. I want to try something different, my different strategy this year. And I thought, no, I'll go a different combination. I went Rowan Marshall. Yes, he's just saying, I know. I started with Rowan Marshall and Max Gorn. So I wanted a bit cheaper so I could have an extra 100k, 150k or so to spread it around other positions. And the forward line was a bit cheaper this year. There wasn't many premiums to choose from outside of Heaney in Taranto um, and Butters at the time. So I thought, yeah, I'll go a bit cheaper. So I went Cornelio and Gresham. And then that freed up me to get more positions, bigger names in the midfield. But there was day cost. Um, never considered Jason Horn France, which is another question you got. We'll get to that soon. But yeah, uh, for, in terms of Grundy, um, I consider getting, since you said you got wits, and Grundy's remain to Ruckman. I look at Tim English. Now he's starting to go up to similar price to Grundy, so maybe too late. Uh, but I would look at Rowan Marshall. He does better when Paddy Ryder's not in the side. Um, 
but he seems to want a bit less when Paddy Wright is in the side because he Rowe plays more forward. Um, it's a bit of a risk, though, you're willing to take. It worked for me, so, I mean, why couldn't it work for you, Lockie? Um, I trade Grundy now. I don't know his exact price off the top of my head, but he's dropping. I, I traded Max Gorn while he was dropping, and now he's stagnating at a certain price, which is fine. So I would look at Gorn if he's a bit cheaper than Grundy now. Um, or that, you know, he wouldn't be. But, um, yeah, I look at Tim English and... Um, Rowan Marshall, they'll be the two. I look at even moving on wits for those two. Uh, your second question from Lockie is time to cash in on Jason Horn Francis. Absolutely, I never considered him. Some people will be shocked that I'm saying this, but I never considered the number one draft pick in Jason Horn Francis. I had a clear plan from the start for Shelley, Dacos, no one else as the main high price rookie mids, mid forwards, you know what I mean. They were the two I considered. Never considered Jason Horn Francis. Yes, he's a great player. Um, from his time in the sample, but I thought it's more of a, you know, medium size forward, pinch in the middle. He's not the player I wanted to consider. Consider he'd be someone that could score some fifties and seventies, um, but not consistently get eighties or something. He might be the odd one here and there. So that's why I never. I know he's had some games like that, but throughout to make money at least. Look at Nick Dacos. He's a prime example of why I picked him and Rochelle over Horn Francis. So. Yes, it is time to cash in on Jason Horn Francis. And your third and final question is, is it worth using a boost to get both Bruce and Malcolm Rojas in this week? Or if just one of them, which one would you get? Um, apparently, Rojas has a break even a minus 71. I just read right before I started recording. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one. Malcolm Rojas from the Gold Coast Sun. Seems so many spots so far. I don't know if you'd be able to lock every single week. Um, right now at least. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to get Rose for your bench, it's worth using the Bruce to get both Bruce and Rose. Yeah. Uh, Bruce, again, Bruce, I'm a bit wary of. I have been considering myself, but because of his cheap price is why a lot of people jump. I don't know why a lot of people are jumping on him. He's very injury prone. He's, he's on the cusp of getting suspended every single time he plays. Um... Uh, I'd be I'd be treading carefully of Braden Proust. I'd stick true to your uh, Marshall English type combination, more safe, more secure, and, and capable of big scores. Where Proust, I know, and if he's playing with Matty Flynn, the same team or Kieran Briggs, his score will decrease even lower. So Malcolm Rojas, sure, why not? If it's a downgrade option, I'd prefer prefer to have Rojas on the bench. If you're downgrading someone, more more of a bench. But worth using the boost, not necessarily to get Proust and Rojas. Uh, yeah. Although I know I just said I was considering Proust, but I'm more probably leaning towards not getting him. But it's up to you, mate, Lockie, if you want to do it. But using the boost is fine. You want to have at least three boosts options by the minimum max, max five, obviously. Minimum two to three by the buy rounds you want to have in terms of boosts. Uh just one of the, if you would get only one of them though, which one would you get? Uh, Rovers for sure. Uh, well, not for sure, but Rovers. Um, so that's your Supercoach question, guys. If you want any Supercoach questions answered in the future, send me a message on Facebook or send them through like Lockie has on Messenger on Facebook or Instagram at AFL Info Live. Now, we're going to review round five. What a round of footy it was. Round five started all the way back on Thursday night at the Gabba. We had Brisbane's 98 defeated the Pies 91. Jordan DeGowie was great. Jack Crisp was great. Lockie Neal, Joe Danaher, uh, Jared Lyons. So a lot of good players in this game. But uh, it was the Lions that just held on by seven points. Jordan DeGowie lifted the Pies late in the quarter. Darcy Moore went up forward. It was a good move from Craig McRae uh, to change the game up. Uh, it was a good game overall, overall to watch considering how the rest of the rounds of the games were. It's probably one of the games of the round, probably if not the game of the round. And uh, the Lions just held on by seven points. On Friday, on Good Friday, it was the Ruse 71, smashed by the Bulldogs 139. Western Bulldogs by 68. McRae was great as always. Dunkley, uh, not Dunkley, Trelaw, uh, Bailey Smith, Nikolaki kicked four. Mm, yeah, not many contributors for North Melbourne. 68 points. Um, but look... I wouldn't be get too excited for my Bulldogs fan. You beat North Melbourne, who will be bottom four for sure this year, so I won't be too excited. Yes, the win's a win. It's great. But, uh, yeah. Now, the Good Friday um, debate. 
one thing I want to say about this is, so you're happy for the Roos to lose the game that they've worked hard with with St. Kilda and the Bulldogs to get. Those three clubs I just mentioned, the Saints, Roos, Dogs. Don't get many marquee games, if not any. This is probably their only one they get. And you want to take it off them? Sure, if you replace them with St. Kilda, but not with Essendon or Richmond or Collingwood or Hawthorne or Geelong. They've got their own market games. Have you ever heard of Anzac Day? Have you ever heard of Dreamtime at the G? Have you heard of the opening round of the season that Carlton and Richmond are in? And Richmond are in that Dreamtime um, Eve game with Melbourne. They've all got their own marquee slots. St Kilda, North Melbourne and Bulldogs own the Good Friday slots. Uh, sure, if you want to swap at St Kilda, that's fine. Or take a rotation out every year. You rotate one every year. It goes out, one comes in, no matter the result. And that's what it should be. So people would say in the give it to Richmond, no, they don't need one, another one. That Essendon, Geelong, Gold, Collingwood, they don't need another market game. They've got enough. Stop thinking about money for once. Now, the other Friday night, Friday game, was that Friday, on Friday night at the Adelaide, uh, at, the, at the Optus Stadium in Perth, the Eagles 58 smashed by the Swans, 121 by 63 points. As expected, Heaney was great. Uh, Shad Warner, Justin McInerney, Jake Lloyd, Callum Mills, uh, Peter Laddams, there was a lot of great plays with the Swans. Eagles were woeful. Uh, they could not score a goal for a very, very long time. Shows how embarrassing they were. Adam Simpson was disgusted, and so he should. They got most of their plays back. I know they're missing um, Gaff, Sheed, Nat Nui, and there was another one too, and McGovern for this game. But they had the whole midfield back essentially, so I know I just said Gaff and Sheed, but they had a full midfield without them. So, no excuses. No excuses now. And Adam Simpson's pretty much hinted at that too. On Saturday, oh, when the Saints, 87, defeated the Sun 61. St. Kilda by 26 points. The last five times these sides played, it was under 10 points. And it, at times, it looked like that was going to be the case. But in the last quarter, it was around the nine-point margin. But the Saints kicked a few quick goals in succession. Then Timmy Memory got a goal late to make it about 20-odd points, and that was the end. Great win for the Saints. Maxi King kicked three. Jack Sinclair, he's going fantastic. All-Australian lock right now. Jack Steele was great, as he always is. Uh, Max King kicked three. Timmy Memory was awesome. Seb Ross was ultra-reliable, as he always is, to shut the haters up this year, Sebby Ross. Uh, Jared Leanett going okay down the back line. Dougal Howard had 15 spoils. So, yeah, it's a um, good round. For the Saints. And then 4 and 1. People would just say, oh, who you beat? Who you beat from last year's finals? Series? Who gives a shit who they beat from last year's finals? We're talking about 2022, not 2021. And uh, for people that in the preseason said to me, oh, Richmond, how could you have them bottom four range? They won three premierships in the last four years or some shit. Oh, so now it matters now, does it? Now it matters. So then when I brought up that we beat Richmond, oh, they, they didn't make finals last year. No, they didn't. But your um, agenda was they're a great side. So now when I say we beat Richmond, it's now apparently nothing. Shows that you trolls know jack shit about football. Have you won Supercoach for the round? No. Have you got a successful football page, a YouTube page? No. You're just low, low, bottom of the barrel scums. Now, great win for the Saints. Um, Richmond, speaking of Richmond and Adelaide, Adelaide 101 at the Adelaide Oval defeated the Tigers 82 by 19 points. Tex was back and great form five for the big Tex. Uh, Josh Rosselli was good late in the game. He was quiet throughout the whole game, but last quarter he stepped up to the occasion. Uh, Rory Sloan, unfortunately, has done his ACL, so I wish Rory all the best. The skipper, um, Rory Laird was good. Tommy Dude was good as well. Uh, all around great performance from the Crows, and they'd be really happy. Since that win on the sh- in the showdown after the sign from Jordan Dawson, they've uh, had some good form. The Crows had a close loss against Essendon, which they should have won. So... The Crows are starting to form some good form. Also on Saturday, which is a night game, the Demons over the Giants by 67 points, 120 to 53. GWS, had they capitalised in the first half with their inaccuracy in front of goal, this game could not have, could well have been closer than the end margin was. Melbourne were dominant in the second half. I'm not disputing that. Like 14 goals to four in the second half. That's not what I'm disputing. I'm factually saying, factually saying, at GWS in the first half, had they kicked straight, it wouldn't have been down by four goals or whatever it was at halftime. They would have been in it. And the margin may not have dragged out to what it was. So uh, 
Leon Cameron disappointed they get Toby Green back this week against the Saints. We'll get to shortly Friday night in Canberra. But uh, yet, Demon's pretty good. Oliver, Petrarca, Gorn, the usual suspects were good for them. Cal Ward and Tom Green were the best for the Giants. On Sunday, Carlton, da 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 da, well, they almost choked a 50 point lead, didn't they? 94 defeated, Port Adelaide 91, Port Adelaide 0 5, Carlton won by three points. Ken Inkley would be disappointed if the first half it was dreadful. But the air credit, the back half of the game showed they are still playing for the coach. They came back. They should have pinched it. Should have pinched it. Kyle Amon had a shot late. Just fell a few metres short. He had a shot from about 55 out. Could have centred it, but with the time, I semi-understand it. Uh, Dan Houston played the game of his career. Uh, sorry, not Dan Houston. Ryan Burton. Dan Houston had a great game too. Ryan Burton played his game of his career. Played game 150. In Ryan Burton. She has gone pretty quick for Ryan Burton to get to that far. Um, sorry, game 100. But uh, he was fantastic, Ryan Burton. He played his best game of his career. Sam Palpepper. Now, you look at his stats. Kick two at about 16 possessions. This is one of the games where he's been criticised as being unfit, lazy, slow. His kicking has been terrible over the last few years. But to his credit, this is one of the best two goals, 16 possession game I've seen from many. Not, I wouldn't say the best ever or anything. I'm not going to go that far. But at least for Sam Palpepper, this is one of these games where he's turned a corner the last few weeks. In this game in particular, which is maybe is a new form from Sam Palpepper, their inside ball. His ball use was good. He was tough in the contest, which he always is that, tough in the contest. But his ball use was good. His decision-making was actually good. Kicked two important goals, and uh, Sam Palpepper will be happy with his performance. But Carlton, by three points, Mackay and Curran over the usual suspects. are full. Funny when they're fit and firing that they go well, those two. And Walsh at 38. George Hewitt with 30, like 13 clearances, 10 score involvements was really, really good. I don't want to say where my votes are yet because I'm going to get to that later on. So, uh, yeah, he was great also. The Bombers on Sunday against the Dockers. The Dockers gave, like they are many sides this year, except for St Kilda. The rest of the sides they first barred the Saints. They've given the old heave-ho, free-yo, are the way to go. They're second this year so far, free-yo by 48 points. Uh, 107 defeated the Bombers, 59. Andrew Phillips got subbed off early. Uh, so they were back just to one ruck and Sam Draper, who I think is completely overrated and overhyped. Andrew Phillips is better than, um, uh, yeah. Andrew Phillips is better than Sam Draper. Don't at me. That is a fact. Might be controversial, but that's what I think. Uh, underrated a bit is Andrew Phillips. Uh, 59, 448 points, as I said. Matt Tabernard, King Seffen, was freaking awesome. Andy Brayshaw, he's one of the best young players, if not the best young player in the competition. Uh, you got Caleb Sarong at 30. Um, Sean Darcy was dominant in the ruck. In the end, when Phillips went off on Draper. I might say Draper in the twos this week. No, nah, you won't probably because Phillips is injured now. Um, but yeah, the Dockers gave him the old heave-ho. The Dockers were great. Alex Pierce was great in defense. So uh, yeah, the Dockers... Who I said would make the eight this year along with St Kilda, and that is heading in the right direction with the Saints fourth and the Dockers second. The final game of the round to go through was Geelong and Hawthorne on Easter Monday yesterday. The Dock, uh, the Dockers, the Hawks ninety two defeated Geelong eighty Hawthorne by twelve points. Hmm. Funny when I said that when we smashed Hawthorne by sixty nine points, a warning was out, and uh. I had Geelong fans come out and tell me, oh, you only beat Hawthorne. You, you smashed Hawthorne. Well, that's easy. Everyone smashes Hawthorne. Oh, Geelong fans. Did you smash Hawthorne? No. Hmm. Oh, but you won there, did you? Oh, no, you didn't even win. Wow. You did not even beat Hawthorne. You lost by 12 points. Scotty, what excuses you got this week? It's not the umpiring. It ain't the umpiring, and if... Uh, that's what you think. Well, I don't know what you're thinking, Scotty. Uh, but so would it. See, so would actually ducked late in the game to try and get a free. And the umpire did not cave in. My God, that give that uh, umpire a trophy. Because most umpires, if not all of them, cave in. In this one instance, he ducked. He had the ball in his hand, Joel Sold. Then he ducked, trying to get his usual ducking free kicks. And uh, he didn't get it. Wow, that umpire deserves a trophy. Some money, maybe. Maybe he didn't get enough money, so he didn't pay enough. <laughs> anyway, jokes aside, don't get at me, Geelong against Salty, saying I'm salty since the 09 grand final. No, we're living in the now, not the future. Uh, we're living in the future and the now, not the past. 
keep living in the past because you've got no success in the future coming your way. One stage field and co retire. If it wasn't for Tom Stewart, you would have no good results. He's your main back and by far. No one in that defense is even close to Tom Stewart's level. He was great yesterday with 27 touches. The Hawks, John Newcomb was great. Sicily was great. And um, who was the other one? Um, a Tom Mitchell had eight possessions in the first half and then had 33 in the end. So he had 25 in the second half. His usual self, Tom Mitchell, was great. The former Brownlow medalist in beast mode was the Hawks in the end. So great win for Sammy Mitchell and the Hawks. Now, we're going to go through... What are we going to go through next, guys? We're going to go through my team of the week. Now, let's start off with the team of the week from the back line. Let's go through them right now. I'm getting it up as we speak. So I'm going to go through from the back line. My round five AFL team of the week from the back line. In the pockets, Tom Duday and James Sicily. The fullback, Alex Pierce. The halfback flank is Jack Sinclair and Dan Houston. Houston, we don't have a problem. Geelong do. <laughs> Centre half back, Tom Stewart. Wingers, D Mac, Dan McKenzie, and Bailey Smith. Centerman, Jordan Digoe. He's going nowhere. Half four line, Tex Walker. He's walking the right way, is Tex. Joe Danaher at the other flank. At centre half forward, Charlie Kerno. And no, no, he is playing well. Forward line pockets. Dylan Moore. How many more good games can Dylan provide? Jack Higgins. He's not missing anything no more. And full forward, Matt Tabernar. He is going the right way, is Matty Tabernar. Na 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 for his opposition this week <laughs> in Essendon. I like these gags. The Ruckman, Peter Laddams, went from the power back to the Swans. He's a Ruckman. The Rovers, Jack Crisp, showing his crisp disposal. See, that gag is back. And George Hewitt is going great. He's the other midfield. BOG for me. In a change, Aaron Norton is um, going well. Tom Mitchell, as I just described before. Jay Gresham and Seb Ross. The emergencies I have are Lockie Neal, Sam Powell, Pepper, Andy Brayshaw, Tom Green, Max Gorn, Clayton Oliver, and Callum Wood. You could say all those Emergency options are stiff, but uh, it's what I've gone with. Leave your thoughts, guys, down below of my uh, stick then with some little gags there. Um, some people are asking. Daniel Rich, unfortunately, I could not fit Daniel Rich in the team. He's a rich boy. <laughs> but uh, someone's asked me to play that gag back again with Jack Crisp and uh, him. So there you go. You're welcome. And, uh, yeah, look, you can say he's a bit top heavy up forward with Tex and Charlie and Joe and Tabana, the four key forwards, but... Uh, Charlie's more mobile, as is Tavernar, and as even his Tex. So, I mean, it's not the most... Uh, there's a tall forward line, but you got the two small forwards in Jack Higgins and Dill Moore, so you've got some flexibility there. And you go, I know you got Norton on the bench, because they, oh, he kicked five from on the ground. Yeah, I don't disagree, but all the other forwards on the ground kicked five or four, so, I mean, it's a bit hard there. And Tom Mitchell was at BOG in the second half, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm going with. So leave your thoughts on my AFL Round 5 team of the week. Now, I'm going to go through the Scoops medal votes. Back-to-back -back big segments right now. The Scoops medal Round 6 votes. I'm going to reenact it like Gillen McLaughlin. <clears throat> round 5, Brisbane v Collingwood. Brisbane, Jay Danaher, one vote. Collingwood, Jay Crisp. Two votes. Collingwood, Jay DeGowie, three votes. North Melbourne v Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs, Jay McRae, one vote. Western Bulldogs, A. Norton, two votes. Western Bulldogs, B. Smith, three votes. West Coast v Sydney. Sydney, P. Laddams, one vote. Sydney, C. Mills, two votes. Sydney, L. Parker, three votes. St Kilda v Gold Coast. St Kilda, J. Gresham, one vote. St Kilda, Jay Steele, two votes. St Kilda. Jay Sinclair, three votes. Adelaide v Richmond. Adelaide R. Laird, one vote. Adelaide v Keys, two votes. Adelaide T. Walker, three votes. Melbourne v GWS. GWS T. Green, one vote. Melbourne 
M. Gorn, two votes. Melbourne, C. Petrarca, three votes. Carlton v. Poitelaide, Poitelaide. Z. Butters, one vote. Poitelaide, R. Burton, two votes. Carlton, G. Hewitt, three votes. Essendon v. Fremantle, Fremantle. S. Darcy, one vote. Fremantle, A. Brayshaw, two votes. Fremantle, M. Tabernar, three votes. Hawthorne v. Geelong, Hawthorne. J. Newcomb, one vote. Hawthorne. J. Cicely, two votes. Hawthorne. D. Moore, three votes. Now, the leaderboard after round five is as follows. An equal second, all on eight votes. Tom Green, Jackson McRae, Travis Boak, and Ben Keys. And the new leader after round five in the scoops middle on nine votes is from the Melbourne Footy Club, Christian Petrarca. Now, I can't confirm there's a lot of players on six and seven. So uh, you can see the whole leaderboard change, just like a click of a finger, just like that. Leave your thoughts on my votes for round five and the overall leaderboard down below. Now, I'm going to preview round six. The game starting on Friday night. There is no Thursday games, no more for the right now. And on Friday night, April 22nd, 7.50, it's the Giants hosting my Saints at Monica Roval in Canberra, 7.50 Victorian time. You know I'm going for the Saints. Um, Toby Green is back for the Giants. It's great for them. Wrong week to bring back his superstar for. Damn it. Could have been one more week, Tobe. Mm. Anyway, should never have been that much in the first week. But anyway, uh, yes, I'm going for the Saints. Paddy Ryder was still missing. Yes, I know. Rubbish, right? Uh, but Roe will... Compete against Braden Pruce. He'll be back from suspension. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a good battle. The Saints should win. You can beat Richmond and Hawthorne and Frio. So, all that. Juniors will be up in the mix still this year. But the way they're going at the moment, the Saints should win by a good four goals or so. Gresh, in all Australian form, as is Jack Sinclair. Jack Steele is ever reliable as always. Dougal Howard, 15 spoils last week. And, um, yeah. Jared Lena, what a pickup he's been as a preseason supplementary period for the power, from the power. So the Saints for me, obviously. Saturday, 145 at Mars. No, we're not going to Mars. We're going to Mars Stadium in Ballarat. The Bulldogs hosting the Crows. Uh, ooh, really, really 50 50. Um, Bulldogs, yes, to smash North Melbourne, but it's North Melbourne. But Adelaide, close loss against Essen and good win over the Tigers and a good win prior to that. In the showdown against the power. Oh, I'll tip the Bulldogs, but I tell you what, right now, this will not shock me if the Crows do come up with a victory. Now, the power hosting the Eagles at Adelaide Oval on Saturday at 4.35 p.m. Victorian time. I'm going to the power. I'm pretty confident in the power. The Eagles, yeah, they're getting players back. Yes, Poilade haven't won the game. Eagles are only won one. He's still got players out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I'm still going to the power. I'm pretty confident in the power. Butters, Gray. Gray back. Butters is back to his best form like he started the season. Without Gray, Butters' form tampered off the last few weeks. But this week it was back against Carlton with Gray back. Gray's a vital cog up forward. Charlie Dixon, they need back badly. They got Aaliyah back. He didn't have his best game on return from injury. They get the cannon back soon, hopefully, in Trent McKenzie. And they shall be okay. The power to flick on the power at the Adelaide Oval in the Twilight game and should beat the Eagles and get their first win. Of 2022. The game on Saturday night. This is really, really good game. This should be. Frio hosting Carlton. 7.40 Victorian time at Optus Stadium in Perth. I'm going for the Dockers to give the Carlton the old heave ho. Uh, Tabernard kicking the 7. You'll have Weedering to combat this week. No uh, average defence this week. Unlike the Essen game. Uh, you'll have Weedering, no doubt. Have a good task on him. Hopefully Rory Lobb can help out in the forward line. Contribute a bit more. Um, Lockie Schultz come back from COVID protocols would be great in for them. Sam Strzokowski is having a great season, especially with Champion Data rated him in elite, which people scoffed at, and rightfully so, but he's performing pretty well. Maybe not the elite center, but very consistent. And it would be in the All-Australian mix, potentially, in the squad. Not in the team, but in the squad. But yeah, no, I'm obviously going for the Dockers to give Carlton the old heave-ho. On Sunday, in Blundstone Arena in Tasmania, on Bev's neck of the woods, North Melbourne hosting Geelong. Mm. I've got 8 out of 9 in the tipping this week. Geelong cost me, which I'm not complaining about because Geelong lost. 
Geelong should win. They should be North Melbourne. Geelong are, uh, North are pretty dreadful. North, Geelong aren't going the greatest, but North Melbourne they're playing, who are going dreadful. So Geelong should win there. On sun, uh, Saturday also, oh, sorry, Sunday, 4.10 Victorian time, the Q Clash. Our try was T. Miller v. D. Zorko. That'll be interesting. Tussle there, and Toy Miller's come out today saying it'll be great to have a big fiery contest again. The Suns hosting the Lions at Metricon Stadium. I'm um, going to the Lions, but this could be this game could go anyway with a bit of aggression from both sides being shown. The Suns having a solid season, so the Lions still doing great as they always do. I'm going the Lions to hear the mighty roar at Metricon, not the Gabba. On Sunday night, the dream time at the G match, Richmond hosting Melbourne, 7.25 at the G. As I said, on Sunday night, uh, Melbourne will give them the old heave-ho. I know we're not talking about dogs, but Melbourne will thump Richmond. Pretty plain and simple. And the final two games to go through on Anzac Day on Monday, April 25th. 12.30, Victorian time at Utah Stadium in Tasmania. Bev's neck of the woods also. Hawks hosting the Swans. Ah, uh, the Swans should win by four goals have been realistic. The final game we go through, Essendon and Collingwood, Anzac Day at the G, 320. Uh, interesting clash. I think the Pies should win. If they can compete against the Lions, they should beat the Bombers, who may be without Jake Stringer also. Uh, I'm going for the Pies in that one. Now, leave your thoughts down below, your tips for the round. Now, what have we got through left? We've done that, done that. Ah, my final thoughts are this announcement the next guest on kick it the scoops tomorrow night wednesday at 7 p.m on the youtube channel and and eventually end up after it's aired on youtube will be on spotify and apple Podcasts, just like this podcast will kick it scoops every single week the next guest is former st kilda assistant coach and current vfl coach for port melbourne adam shrubalak we talk about plenty of things and we talk about four particular players in general um, we go through their chance of being redrafted in the AFL, or being drafted for the first time. Talk about how his time was at the Saints coaching, his philosophy for coaching at Port Melbourne. Uh, that after their win, after after beating Essendon from come behind four goals down at half time, over four goals actually, and coming to end up winning by four goals was a great effort for the Port Melbourne Footy Club, kicking eight goals in the last quarter. We talk to Adam Strobel like about that, their rest of the season ambitions and uh how they go about it after losing so many experienced players. We'll go through that. So hope you guys enjoyed this long, lengthy, extensive edition of Kick It to Scoops. I'll be on next Tuesday night as again at 7 p.m. due to the two games on Monday night, just for the reason like this week. Until next week, everyone, next Tuesday night, and the interview with Adam Scrubberlack tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Wednesday. Uh, until then, have a great one, guys. Enjoy. And this is... The sole admin of AFL information, trade rumors, and results. Uh, I do also say go Saints and acknowledge me. You not only, if you didn't already acknowledge me, you will now, as I am the number one super coach GOAT for round five, 2022, in the top 106 overall so far. Until then, go Saints and acknowledge me.